In petrochemistry, petroleum geology and organic chemistry, cracking is the process whereby complex organic molecules such as kerogens or long-chain hydrocarbons are broken down into simpler molecules such as light hydrocarbons, by the breaking of carbon-carbon bonds in the precursors. The rate of cracking and the end products are strongly dependent on the temperature and presence of catalysts. Cracking is the breakdown of a large alkane into smaller, more useful alkenes. Simply put, hydrocarbon cracking is the process of breaking a long chain of hydrocarbons into short ones. This process requires high temperatures and high pressure. More loosely, outside the field of petroleum chemistry, the term cracking is used to describe any type of splitting of molecules under the influence of heat, catalysts and solvents, such as in processes of destructive distillation or pyrolysis. Fluid catalytic cracking produces a high yield of petrol and LPG, while hydrocracking is a major source of jet fuel, diesel fuel, naphtha, and again yields LPG. History and patents Among several variants of thermal cracking methods variously known as the Shukov cracking process, Burton cracking process, Burton Humphreys cracking process, and Dubs cracking process. Vladimir Shukov, a Russian engineer, invented and patented the first in 1891 Russian Empire, patent number 12,926, November 7, 1891. One installation was used to a limited extent in Russia, but development was not followed up. In the first decade of the 20th century the American engineers William Merriam Burton and Robert E. Humphreys independently developed and patented a similar process as U.S. Patent 1049667 on June 8, 1908. Among its advantages was the fact that both the condenser and the boiler were continuously kept under pressure. In its earlier versions, it was a batch process, rather than continuous, and many patents were to follow in the USA and Europe, though not all were practical. In 1924, a delegation from the American Sinclair Oil Corporation visited Shukov. Sinclair Oil apparently wished to suggest that the patent of Burton and Humphreys, in use by Standard Oil, was derived from Shukov's patent for oil cracking, as described in the Russian patent. If that could be established, it could strengthen the hand of rival American companies wishing to invalidate the Burton-Humphreys patent. In the event Shukov satisfied the Americans that in principle Burton's method closely resembled his 1891 patents, though his own interest in the matter was primarily to establish that the Russian oil industry could easily build a cracking apparatus according to any of the described systems without being accused by the Americans of borrowing for free. At that time, just a few years after the Russian Revolution, Russia was desperate to develop industry and earn foreign exchange, so their oil industry eventually did obtain much of their technology from foreign companies, largely American. At about that time, fluid catalytic cracking was being explored and developed and soon replaced most of the purely thermal cracking processes in the fossil fuel processing industry. The replacement was not complete, many types of cracking, including pure thermal cracking, still are in use, depending on the nature of the feedstock and the products required to satisfy market demands. Thermal cracking remains important, for example in producing naphtha, gas oil, and coke, and more sophisticated forms of thermal cracking have been developed for various purposes. These include visbreaking, steam cracking, and coking. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Cracking methodologies. <coughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Thermal methods. Thermal cracking was the first category of hydrocarbon cracking to be developed. Thermal cracking is an example of a reaction whose energetics are dominated by entropy increment S degree rather than by enthalpy increment H degree in the Gibbs free energy equation increment G degree equals increment H degree T increment S degree. Although the bond dissociation energy D for a carbon-carbon single bond is relatively high about 375 kJ per mole and cracking is highly endothermic, the large positive entropy change resulting from the fragmentation of one large molecule into several smaller pieces, together with the extremely high temperature, makes T increment S degree term larger than the increment H degree term, thereby favoring the cracking reaction. Topic: <laughs> Thermal cracking. Modern high-pressure thermal cracking operates at absolute pressures of about 7000 kilopascals. An overall process of disproportionation can be observed where light Hydrogen-rich products are formed at the expense of heavier molecules which condense and are depleted of hydrogen. The actual reaction is known as homolytic fission and produces alkenes, which are the basis for the economically important production of polymers. Thermal cracking is currently used to upgrade very heavy fractions or to produce light fractions or distillates, burner fuel and or petroleum coke. Two extremes of the thermal cracking in terms of product range are represented by the high temperature process called steam cracking or pyrolysis CA 750 degrees Celsius to 900 degrees Celsius or higher which produces valuable ethylene and other feedstocks for the petrochemical industry and the milder temperature delayed coking CA 500 degrees Celsius which can produce, under the right conditions, valuable needle coke, a highly crystalline petroleum coke used in the production of electrodes for the steel and aluminium industries. William Merriam Burton developed one of the earliest thermal cracking processes in 1912 which operated at 700 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit 371 to 399 degrees Celsius and an absolute pressure of 90 psi 620 kilopascals and was known as the Burton process. Shortly thereafter, in 1921, C.P. Dubbs, an employee of the Universal Oil Products Company, developed a somewhat more advanced thermal cracking process which operated at 750 to 860 degrees Fahrenheit, 399 to 460 degrees Celsius, and was known as the Dubbs process. The Dubbs process was used extensively by many refineries until the early 1940s when catalytic cracking came into use. Topic: <laughs> Steam cracking. Steam cracking is a petrochemical process in which saturated hydrocarbons are broken down into smaller, often unsaturated hydrocarbons. It is the principal industrial method for producing the lighter alkenes or commonly olefins, including ethene or ethylene and propene or propylene. Steam cracker units are facilities in which a feedstock such as naphtha, liquefied petroleum gas (LPG), ethane, propane or butane is thermally cracked through the use of steam in a bank of pyrolysis furnaces to produce lighter hydrocarbons. The products obtained depend on the composition of the feed, the hydrocarbon to steam ratio, and on the cracking temperature and furnace residence time. In steam cracking, a gaseous or liquid hydrocarbon feed like naphtha, LPG or ethane is diluted with steam and briefly heated in a furnace without the presence of oxygen. 
Typically, the reaction temperature is very high, at around 850 degrees Celsius, but the reaction is only allowed to take place very briefly. In modern cracking furnaces, the residence time is reduced to milliseconds to improve yield, resulting in gas velocities up to the speed of sound. After the cracking temperature has been reached, the gas is quickly quenched to stop the reaction in a transfer line heat exchanger or inside a quenching header using quench oil. The products produced in the reaction depend on the composition of the feed, the hydrocarbon to steam ratio, and on the cracking temperature and furnace residence time. Light hydrocarbon feeds such as ethane, LPGs or light naphtha give product streams rich in the lighter alkenes, including ethylene, propylene, and butadiene. Heavier hydrocarbon full range and heavy naphthas as well as other refinery products feeds give some of these, but also give products rich in aromatic hydrocarbons and hydrocarbons suitable for inclusion in gasoline or fuel oil. A higher cracking temperature also referred to as severity favors the production of ethene and benzene, whereas lower severity produces higher amounts of propene, C4 hydrocarbons and liquid products. The process also results in the slow deposition of coke, a form of carbon, on the reactor walls. This degrades the efficiency of the reactor, so reaction conditions are designed to minimize this. Nonetheless, a steam cracking furnace can usually only run for a few months at a time between decokings. Decokes require the furnace to be isolated from the process and then a flow of steam or a steam-air mixture is passed through the furnace coils. This converts the hard solid carbon layer to carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Once this reaction is complete, the furnace can be returned to service. Topic: <laughs> Process details. The areas of an ethylene plant are Steam cracking furnaces Primary and secondary heat recovery with quench A dilution steam recycle system between the furnaces and the quench system Primary compression of the cracked gas three stages of compression Hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide removal acid gas removal Secondary compression, one or two stages. Drying of the cracked gas. Cryogenic treatment. All of the cold cracked gas stream goes to the demethanizer tower. The overhead stream from the demethanizer tower consists of all the hydrogen and methane that was in the cracked gas stream. Cryogenically, minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 157 degrees Celsius, treating this overhead stream separates hydrogen from methane. Methane recovery is critical to the economical operation of an ethylene plant. The bottom stream from the demethanizer tower goes to the dethanizer tower. The overhead stream from the dethanizer tower consists of all the C2s that were in the cracked gas stream. The C2 stream contains acetylene, which is explosive above 200 kPa If the partial pressure of acetylene is expected to exceed these values, the C2 stream is partially hydrogenated. The C2s then proceed to a C2 splitter. The product ethylene is taken from the overhead of the tower and the ethane coming from the bottom of the splitter is recycled to the furnaces to be cracked again. The bottom stream from the deethanizer tower goes to the depropanizer tower. The overhead stream from the depropanizer tower consists of all the C3s that were in the cracked gas stream. Before feeding the C3s to the C3 splitter, the stream is hydrogenated to convert the methylacetylene and propadine mix. This stream is then sent to the C3 splitter. The overhead stream from the C3 splitter is product propylene and the bottom stream is propane which is sent back to the furnaces for cracking or used as fuel. 
The bottom stream from the depropanizer tower is fed to the debutanizer tower. The overhead stream from the debutanizer is all of the C4s that were in the cracked gas stream. The bottom stream from the debutanizer light pyrolysis gasoline consists of everything in the cracked gas stream that is C5 or heavier. Since ethylene production is energy intensive, much effort has been dedicated to recovering heat from the gas leaving the furnaces. Most of the energy recovered from the cracked gas is used to make high pressure 1200 psig steam. This steam is in turn used to drive the turbines for compressing cracked gas, the propylene refrigeration compressor, and the ethylene refrigeration compressor. An ethylene plant, once running, does not need to import steam to drive its steam turbines. A typical world-scale ethylene plant about 1.5 billion pounds of ethylene per year uses a 45,000 horsepower 34,000 kilowatts cracked gas compressor, a 30,000 horsepower 22,000 kilowatts propylene compressor, and a 15,000 horsepower 11,000 kilowatts ethylene compressor. Topic Catalytic methods The catalytic cracking process involves the presence of acid catalysts usually solid acids such as silica alumina and zeolites which promote a heterolytic asymmetric breakage of bonds yielding pairs of ions of opposite charges, usually a carbocation and the very unstable hydride anion. Carbon localized free radicals and cations are both highly unstable and undergo processes of chain rearrangement, CC scission in position beta as in cracking, and intra and intermolecular hydrogen transfer. In both types of processes, the corresponding reactive intermediates radicals, ions, are permanently regenerated, and thus they proceed by a self propagating chain mechanism. The chain of reactions is eventually terminated by radical or ion recombination. Topic: Fluid catalytic cracking. Fluid catalytic cracking is a commonly used process, and a modern oil refinery will typically include a cat cracker, particularly at refineries in the U.S., due to the high demand for gasoline. The process was first used around 1942 and employs a powdered catalyst. During World War II, the Allied forces had plentiful supplies of the materials in contrast to the Axis forces which suffered severe shortages of gasoline and artificial rubber. Initial process implementations were based on low-activity alumina catalyst and a reactor where the catalyst particles were suspended in a rising flow of feed hydrocarbons in a fluidized bed. Alumina catalyzed cracking systems are still in use in high school and university laboratories in experiments concerning alkanes and alkenes. The catalyst is usually obtained by crushing pumice stones, which contain mainly aluminium oxide and silica into small, porous pieces. In the laboratory, aluminium oxide or porous pot must be heated. In newer designs, cracking takes place using a very active zeolite-based catalyst in a short contact time vertical or upward sloped pipe called the riser. Preheated feed is sprayed into the base of the riser via feed nozzles where it contacts extremely hot fluidized catalyst at 1230 to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, 666 to 760 degrees Celsius. The hot catalyst vaporizes the feed and catalyzes the cracking reactions that break down the high molecular weight oil into lighter components including LPG, gasoline, and diesel. The catalyst hydrocarbon mixture flows upward through the riser for a few seconds, and then the mixture is separated via cyclones. 
The catalyst-free hydrocarbons are routed to a main fractionator for separation into fuel gas, LPG, gasoline, naphtha, light cycle oils used in diesel and jet fuel, and heavy fuel oil. During the trip up the riser, the cracking catalyst is spent by reactions which deposit coke on the catalyst and greatly reduce activity and selectivity. The spent Catalyst is disengaged from the cracked hydrocarbon vapors and sent to a stripper where it contacts steam to remove hydrocarbons remaining in the catalyst pores. The spent catalyst then flows into a fluidized bed regenerator where air or in some cases air plus oxygen is used to burn off the coke to restore catalyst activity and also provide the necessary heat for the next reaction cycle cracking being an endothermic reaction the regenerated Catalyst then flows to the base of the riser, repeating the cycle. The gasoline produced in the FCC unit has an elevated octane rating but is less chemically stable compared to other gasoline components due to its olefinic profile. Olefins in gasoline are responsible for the formation of polymeric deposits in storage tanks, fuel ducts, and injectors. The FCC LPG is an important source of C3 C4 olefins and isobutane that are essential feeds for the alkylation process and the production of polymers such as polypropylene. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Hydrocracking Hydrocracking is a catalytic cracking process assisted by the presence of added hydrogen gas. Unlike a hydrotreater, hydrocracking uses hydrogen to break CC bonds. Hydrotreatment is conducted prior to hydrocracking to protect the catalysts in a hydrocracking process. The products of this process are saturated hydrocarbons, depending on the reaction conditions temperature, pressure, catalyst activity. These products range from ethane, LPG to heavier hydrocarbons consisting mostly of isoparaffins. Hydrocracking is normally facilitated by a bifunctional catalyst that is capable of rearranging and breaking hydrocarbon chains as well as adding hydrogen to aromatics and olefins to produce naphthenes and alkanes. The major products from hydrocracking are jet fuel and diesel, but low sulfur naphtha fractions and LPG are also produced. All these products have a very low content of sulfur and other contaminants. It is very common in Europe and Asia because those regions have high demand for diesel and kerosene. In the US, fluid catalytic cracking is more common because the demand for gasoline is higher. The hydrocracking process depends on the nature of the feedstock and the relative rates of the two competing reactions, hydrogenation and cracking. Heavy aromatic feedstock is converted into lighter products under a wide range of very high pressures 1000 to 2000 psi and fairly high temperatures 750 degrees to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit 400 to 800 degrees Celsius in the presence of hydrogen and special catalysts the primary functions of hydrogen are thus Preventing the formation of polycyclic aromatic compounds if feedstock has a high paraffinic content. Reducing tar formation. Reducing impurities. Preventing buildup of coke on the catalyst. Converting sulfur and nitrogen compounds present in the feedstock to hydrogen sulfide and ammonia, and achieving high cetane number fuel. Topic. Fundamentals Outside of the industrial sector, cracking of CC and CH bonds are rare chemical reaction. In principle, ethane can undergo homolysis 
CH3 CH3 2 CH3 because CC bond energy is so high 377 kJ per mole, this reaction is not observed under laboratory conditions. More common examples of cracking reactions involve retro Diels Alder reactions. Illustrative is the thermal cracking of dicyclopentadiene to give cyclopentadiene. See also Fossil fuel reforming <laughs>